Hi everyone, my name is Savannah and today I'll be discussing Doctor Assisted Death, A Plan for America. Did you know that a terminally ill patient typically has six months or less to live? This means that a person's condition has gotten so awful and so painful that they are expected to live another half of a year or less and are going to endure more suffering that worsens every day during this time. This is so important when it comes to the ethics of how a life like this should end. Especially in this condition, and it also is important to discuss what is allowed as an option for a patient like this. There are so many factors that go into making a decision towards doctor assisted death. This includes mental and physical condition of the patient, patient's life expectancy, whether or not they participated in palliative care or hospice care, and finally, and most importantly at the moment, whether or not the state they live in even considers this as a legal option for them. I'm going to go over a plan that has the potential to be implemented in order to advocate for the legalization of this practice in all the states in America and how to make it more regulated in order to avoid abuse of the procedure. The issue with doctor assisted death in the US today is that it isn't legal in many states. In fact, it's only legal in 10 jurisdictions, nine of which are states and the last one being Washington DC. It is a significant moral quandary, just as is abortion and other controversial topics in the US, but it should be an option for those who choose to and qualify for it. These policies in place already affect those who are terminally ill, primarily those of an older age. However, there are exceptions to this trend by a few younger patients who qualify for this procedure. For example, a 29-year-old woman by the name of Brittany Manor, who was diagnosed with terminal brain cancer, chose to die on her own terms. According to a CNN article in which she wrote before she passed, she stated that she had already considered hospice care, but was afraid of the consequences of pain management, and she was worried that these medications would change her personality close to the time of her passing. She also didn't want her family to have to endure the suffering of watching her die in a hospital bed for who knows how long. At the time of her decision, she had to move from California to Oregon because Oregon was the closest state that had legalized this procedure around that time. The question at hand is, was she simply suicidal because of her condition or was she trying to look for a more peaceful way to avoid her suffering? Although Brittany was indeed looking for a way to avoid suffering, she simply did not want to die. But at the end of the day, she had a terminal illness and had a huge decision to make that would be morally right for her. This example proves that doctor assisted death is not exclusive to older people. And I certainly don't think there should be an age limit on those who qualify for this procedure if someone were to be terminally ill, just like Brittany was. As stated before, Older people are also affected by this issue when they become extremely ill. According to Death with Dignity, Dignity, the average range of ages are older than 65 years with a median age of 72 years old. So there are several age groups that are affected, but primarily doctor assisted death apply to those who are over 65 years old. Steps need to be taken by local and state governments to begin the lawmaking process in order to make this practice legal in the rest of the 41 states that have yet to authorize it. This responsibility is of citizen advocates and government officials at the local, state, and federal level in order to make this moral procedure an option to everyone it applies to. The plan that I would suggest implementing has elements from the states that have already legalized it. Once doctor-assisted death is legalized by the majority of states in the U.S., programs should be implemented in hospitals, palliative care, and hospice care programs that promote doctor-assisted death to those who believe they or their loved ones qualify for it. According to a CNN article about New Jersey legalizing the practice, the law states that a patient must have six months or less to live in order to qualify, amongst other qualifications. I believe that this requirement is absolutely necessary and will, be, and will be implemented in my plan. Also, according to this article, since the bill was passed in the Senate for the legalization in New Jersey, 19 other states have already begun the process to legalize doctor assisted euthanasia, which would set the first part of my plan into motion. 
A few other qualifications that would be enforced in my plan include mental health screening for depression and suicidal behavior, the condition must be fatal, and there will be a requirement for a family member, spouse, or friend to sign off on the procedure for the patient. The signing off may bring about some issues, but there will be paperwork that requires the patient's consent for their friends and family members to sign off on their behalf if this becomes a problem. Patients will also require the approval of two, at least two doctors um, that practice at different hospitals or private practices in order to meet the requirements. Once these steps are carried out, those who meet guidelines on the procedure can begin to advocate their case and pass away in a peaceful way that is morally acceptable. There are many practical applications to this procedure, as demonstrated in states that have already legalized it. But the primary problem at the moment, minus um, the legalization of it, is whether or not you can afford it. An issue with this procedure, according to the Physician Assisted Death Scanning the Landscape workshop book, is that the cost of it ranges from $3,000 to $5,000. And for those who can't afford it, they're left suffering in their illness until they inevitably pass away. This is a major problem because insurance companies certainly aren't covering it yet, especially when the legalization of it is only in 10 jurisdictions. This workshop book also states that states are working on combinations of medications that are less expensive and have the same lethal effects as the initial drug. Um, the only problem with it now is that they're still working out the kinks of the side effects. Another issue with the procedure itself is that there isn't a way to find doctors who participate in dying with dignity. This is mostly because it is a strictly voluntary practice on behalf of the doctor. And there are a ton of strict rules um, on doctor confidentiality. According to NPR, the lack of access is much more profound than anyone is talking about. Unfortunately, I don't see a way of getting around doctor confidentiality, so there has to be another way to convey this procedure's availability to patients. I think the way to do this is to work on getting the procedure legalized in the remaining 41 states that have yet to authorize dying with dignity and seek out programs from there. The programs mentioned in my plan before is the last step to campaigning for patients who are seeking a gentle and harmless death. The best part about these programs is that patients can pass away where they please. Now, typically they are discouraged from doing so in public places, but this does mean that they can pass away in their favorite place with their favorite people. In my eyes, this is such a this is such a positive take on a terminal illness. It is why it is such a necessity in healthcare. And that is all this procedure is trying to do is to give these patients and their family members a positive way to exit this life and participate in the exiting of their loved one's life. Doctor assisted death is essential to the healthcare system in order to provide a service to those in suffering who only have a few months left to live. A few months where they'll be bed bound and by any meaning of the word, miserable. The reasoning for this procedure and why it came about in the first place was to give terminally ill patients a positive way to exit this life and allow them to quote unquote, die with dignity. Hence, why that is interchangeable with doctor-assisted death and euthanasia. The implementation and legalization of this procedure needs to be more widely spread in order to help people in America and share this positive procedure for those who qualify. Some states have already taken action to legalize this practice. And as long as they continue to do so, my plan can be set in motion and doctor-assisted death can begin applying to all of the patients that apply, excuse me, that qualify. And just because this practice is legalized doesn't mean that every terminally ill patient has to utilize it, but it absolutely should be an option for those who wish to utilize it. What options would you want if you were in these patients' shoes? I bet you would at least want the option to pass away on your own terms. Thank you.